the wisest decisions you took in your life was to be born again because from that day god also took an acute interest in you to protect you Hello lovely viewers, welcome to another episode of The Solution is in the Macarius, right here at the Macarius Studios. Today we are discussing from the book Loyalty and Disloyalty, written by our father, Bishop Dan Ward Mills. And we have Apostle Toss in the studio with us today. Today we are discussing chapter 6, the various types of accusations. So Apostle Toss, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much and I want to also once again thank our viewers for always tuning in, watching us, uh, being with us. All their comments, their questions um, are an encouragement to us and I want to thank you once again for receiving us into your homes and also to add to what you said to the author, our father bishop, that you would know. want to honor him and thank him for writing this book that has been a great blessing, great blessing to pastors around the world. Thank you for welcoming welcome your friends. Also. So please, what are the various types of accusations? You see, once once again, if you, when, when you read the Bible, there, there are different uh, names used for the devil. There are, because of the different manifestations, the different ways in which he attacks us. Also, when it comes to accusations, which is his main tool that he uses, there are different types of accusations and it is extremely important that we understand what is happening to us when we are being accused. You see, unless you have a deep understanding and deep means a lot understanding, the Bible says that the word of God dwells in you richly. Unless you understand the different nuances, the different aspects, the different ways, the different manifestations of how you are attacked, you may see yourself being attacked, but you don't even know you are being attacked. Like, for example, a doctor can look at you breathing, and even before you yourself know that you have an asthma attack, by looking at the regularity of your breathing, just by observing you, he will be able to predict what is going to happen to you before you even know what would happen to you. Signs of disloyalty are also like that. The more learned you are, in signs of disloyalty, the more you'll be able to predict what is going to happen and then you can stop it or ameliorate the effect of it for the count. The Bible says the prudent man, the wise man, the learned man, the knowledgeable man see the evil ahead and he prepares himself for it. But the simpleton, the simple man, the man with little understanding passes on and is destroyed. Accusations are also the same. They come in different ways and it is important for us to know the different ways so that when they come you will be able to identify the voice of the devil as a human being is speaking to you like jesus saw or jesus was with peter and when peter said you are not going to go to the court i don't agree he said far be it for me you are not going to die jesus immediately saw through the words of peter who a few seconds before had said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus had said, My heavenly Father has spoken to you. Few seconds later, the same Jesus said, Satan has just spoken through you. It's important to understand and recognize accusations when they come and then reject them. Otherwise, they will affect you in a way that you never thought was possible. Happened to Moses. He couldn't recognize that. Those who were accusing him were actually trying to stop his ministry. So in his inability to recognize the effect and the power of accusations, he reacted wrongly. And that same day, God told him, no more, you are not entering the promised land. Moses begged until God told him, the best I can do is I'll show you the promised land, but you will not enter into it. 
because Moses reacted wrongly to accusations. So let's go. The first one is when you are accused by direct allegations. Remember that an accusation is a statement to show that you've done something wrong, you are a bad person, or you are intending to do something bad. You see, I never underestimate the power of accusations. Sometimes, you know, and I've become very careful, even in giving examples, because I may even give you an example as an illustration. As an illustration, but the fact that it has come out of my mouth, even if the show ends, and even when the show ends, it will make you unsure of yourself. It will make you worry just because you have heard it. Even though it was said in jest, it was said as an example. You see, words have creative power. Remember that Jesus said, you will give account for every idol word you utter. He didn't say every idol word you utter from the pulpit. He didn't say every idol word you, you utter when you were angry. He said every idol word, including even an innocent example or even an illustrative example you were given. You see, that's why you may even, even find people who leave church, churches and they say when the pastor was preaching, he used me as an example. The pastor has not even mentioned his name. You see, but such is the power of accusation that once it comes out, maybe nobody even in the church knows it's you. But just the fact that you heard it has such power that you don't even want to go anywhere near that person or that place again. We, so that's why you must be very careful about the things you say and then the things you also allow yourself to hear about yourself. Because, <laughs> yes, it never goes away. Allow yourself to hear. You allow yourself to hear. <laughs> because there are times when you should not hear some things. Yes. But maybe you feel that if you hear it, then you know how to behave. But I tell you, I've learned over the years that is, you are better off not hearing some things. That's true. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Number one, accusations by direct allegations. This is the easily recognized type of accusation. You are this. You are like this. Why are you always like this? That's easy. Because you, should, because you can see clearly that somebody is saying something bad to you about you. Matthew 25, 24. Then he, then he who had received the one talent came to him and said, Lord, I know you, that thou art a hard man. You see, not a direct allegation that you are hard, you are wicked, you are quick-tempered, you are unreasonable, you are a gun, you are an ashanti. You, don't you know you are a I don't know what the tribe are you, you are a gun. But when now you listen to this, you, you, you know you are a gun. Okay. How come therefore that when somebody says you are a gun, you get angry? Because you can actually you can see that based on the context, you are a gun. But the person saying I know you, you are a gun is usually always a negative statement. That guns are somewhere. Recently, I met a pastor who's, who, who said, if you marry a gun woman who does not know how to shout, then she is not a true gun. <laughs> it is so sad in empty and we will get there soon. Accusations by stereotypes. You see, so you may find yourself completely opposite. You don't shout. You are not quarrelsome. But as what he said, you are a gun. You can see that something bad, something negative is being said to you and about you. So that's why I'm saying what you allow yourself to hear. Do you know that I can speak to you but you will not hear? Or I can speak to you but you, but you will reject what I said. And so even though I said it and you listened, you didn't hear. Or you may even have heard but you don't allow it to enter you. So that's why Jesus Christ said, take heed how you hear. It is important because faith comes by hearing, whether you like it or not. You will believe. Faith is your belief. You will believe what you hear about yourself. After I got to understand the power of accusations, I stopped allowing myself to hear certain things. 
let me put it this way a pastor can never do well if he surrounds himself with people who accuse him number one number two a pastor can never do well unless he surrounds himself with people who say good things about him so now the next question is are you saying we should surround ourselves with yes men yes god surrounds himself with yes men what does the bible say in revelations and i saw millions of millions of angels that no man could number what were they doing there singing where they is who sits on the throne yes, the only person in heaven who was saying something negative about god was cast out yes. you see and when human beings will do well we pastor it doesn't mean we are perfect you see every pastor is more aware about his imperfections than those who are even accusing him of imperfection so he doesn't really need any other person to point out his wrongs to him they are already more obvious to him so dear pastor watching me look i saw a friend of mine a sister of mine once very pretty but for as long as i've known her she has always had a hairstyle that covers her forehead it didn't even occur to me but then one day I saw her in braids and she had tied it to the back. And I said, Wow! Whatever her name was, she was looking very nice today. Then she said, Yes, but when she was a teenager, some, some of her friends laughed at her in secondary school that her forehead is big. <laughs> so from she's 50 something now. So from then she has never showed her forehead again. But when she did, and she remembered that. Everybody seems to say nobody ever remarked about their fault. That's why I'm saying that you must be careful what you allow yourself to hear because you may find me quick tempered, but it may be because you are always doing something bad and I always have to correct you. But somebody else who is not like that will never even know that you are a quick tempered person. You see, so it is, it is very important for us. That we do not allow ourselves to hear negative things about us because they have a way of affecting us. They have a way of controlling our behavior. Like this lady, never ever did a hairstyle that showed her forehead. Pretty. You see, plus, you may be surprised that those telling you you have a big forehead may actually be jealous of your beauty and just want to say something negative about you to bring you down to their level of themselves. So you should be careful. Let me tell you, I don't allow anybody to say anything bad to me. I can assure you about that. I can assure you about that. I'm sure by now you've, re you've realized that in church, everybody around me likes me and says good things about me. It is intentional. That's how come I'm able to do well. Nobody thrives in the presence of opposition. Nobody. And if you're a pastor, Never say in the spirit of being objective, in the spirit of being um what in the spirit of being placative, in the spirit of being humble. Mm -hmm. Have people on your committee who oppose you in the name of constructive criticism. There's nothing like constructive criticism. In school, mm -hmm. we used to write essays, pros and cons of this. Everything has advantages and disadvantages, yeah. but only one decision can be implemented at a time. Yeah. Surround yourself with people who will implement your decision yeah. at the time in which it is taken. Not those who will directly accuse you that you just want to win the church's money. You just want to do something to make your name great. You just want to build an empire. You are a hard man. You just don't want that to speak. Who wakes up in the morning with their plan not to let people sleep? <laughs> what would they benefit from it? Number two, accusations by criticisms. Criticism is to make an opinion about someone's faults or bad qualities. Like I'm saying again, everybody has advantages and disadvantages. But you see that when using politics as an example, Whenever one political party is in power, those who are in the opposition only see bad qualities about the other side. 
and those who are in power also only see bad things about others. So you can see that somebody seeing and seeing something bad about you has nothing to do with whether there's something good and bad about you. It has all to do with whether the person is on your side or not. Douglas 12 1. And Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. You see, let me make a point here. Pastor, it is very important for you to understand that God has called you. But the Bible says, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? You are a servant of God. God called you to serve him. You are not meant to serve the congregation. You are meant to serve the congregation to the extent that God has commanded you to serve them for him and on his behalf. But it is, like the Bible says, it is actually God who judges us. So it is important to let God guide you by your conscience in all things and not the people because Moses had married an Ethiopian woman. And let me make it clear. Let me make it clear. Moses himself, Venice, had bought a law that the Israelites were not to marry from among their nations. Why then has Moses got to marry one of the ladies from among their nations? We can't tell. So you can even say that Moses had broken a law. You can say that Moses had sinned. For some reason, we don't know God's mind on it, but God didn't seem to be angry with Moses. But here now comes Miriam and Aaron criticizing Moses. Let's put it this way. For sinning, what was the effect of it? In verse 13 of uh, Numbers 12, the Bible says that and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Miriam and Aaron. Not Moses. Not Moses. But Miriam and Aaron. For criticizing Moses, I'll give you another example, more extreme. Jesus told us, I was in prison. You didn't visit me. Very serious offense. Go uh, depart from me. Venice, how then does he, Jesus visit his brother John the Baptist when John the Baptist is in jail? So, you see, the Bible says the secret things belong to God. You see, so it is important for us to leave God to judge his own servants. And if you are not happy with God's servant in this church, thank God. There are other churches you can go where maybe the servant of God there is more tuned to how you are. But it is no reason for you to stay in a church and judge the pastor of that church for things that you cannot control. You see, because here you see Miriam and Aaron criticizing Moses. Let's, let's be fair for Moses doing what was wrong. Recently, I met a lady who was looking for a church. To join and when I heard you looking for a church to join, I sought out to invite her to join my church. Then I laid out on her that she wanted to leave her church because she said there were too many bad stories about her pastor, so she was not comfortable being in the church and wanted to join. Was looking for a church to join. When I heard her say there are too many questions about her pastor, <laughs> so she stopped her church. I said she shouldn't come to my church because. I don't know how long before she will also start seeing problems with me. Because everywhere you go, there will be things you don't like. Yes. You see, so it is important for us to leave the judgment of God's servants to God and not to accuse them by criticizing them. Amen. Look, it's Moses who received the loss from God, not even Miriam and Aaron. But you see, there are things we don't understand. Like I'm saying, Jesus didn't visit John the Baptist. How do you explain it? There are many other gray areas in the Bible that will shock you. That they are actually contrary to the thing that we think are right or wrong. That's why the Bible says, judge not before the time. Until the righteous judge comes, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. And then shall every man be things of God. So it is important to leave God but Don't criticize anybody. There's something you don't understand. Look, think about it. Most of the things that you may not like in a church you've been in have nothing to do with you. <laughs> no, you think about it. They don't affect you in any way. So how come that we go and take a problem 
and then that doesn't concern us, and then we bring it upon ourselves as though we are the protagonist in it. We should leave God to handle his servants. Now, next, you know, and let me make it uh, make this point before we continue. In all spheres of life, not just in the church life, it is the same. In marriage, I find marriage to be the number two arena apart from church where criticisms have their most destructive effect. Yeah. To me, this is one of the best marriage counseling manuals. This book. What happens in marriage? Very simple. Marriage is about husband and wife talking to themselves or relating with themselves, acting among themselves. So that is also the arena where accusations can have their most destructive effect based on the words and the actions of each party towards the other. And let me tell you, Jesus who is God said that divorces never to be entered into divorces wrong, wrong, wrong. Except for adultery. Jesus said for adultery, you can divorce. How come then that most divorce doesn't come from adultery? I don't know many marriages for which adultery has dissolved their marriage. Check this. All divorce is from accusations, not adultery. <laughs> adultery leads to anger, disappointment, all the emotions, then forgiveness. But for some reason, the presence of accusations seems to be more destructive than even the presence of adultery for which God said you can divorce. I give this example all the time so that as we juxtapose, because see, for all of us, we think of adultery as the worst thing that can ever happen. But I'm debunking it on this show and say that, yes, it's the worst thing that can ever happen. But that worst thing that can ever happen does not seem to lead to the worst decision that can ever be taken. But words that are spoken, actions that cast insinuations, that don't seem distracted when they are said and when they are done, done, rather seem to lead to that most terrible of decisions. So we should not take accusations for granted. We should never underrate the power of somebody directly accusing you, directly criticizing you. Ah, don't do that. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> no, it's in the audience, not just for you. <laughs> Number three, accusations by memory. The Bible says, do all things without memory. Memory is when unfavorable comments and statements are made under two. You see, the power of memory is that you don't intend the victim or the subject to hear it. You see, but there's a way that everybody who hears it forms a strong opinion about the people who, um, about whom their memory is taking place. You see? And then when somebody comes and says, look, you, you don't know them. He may not even tell you what they are doing, but as soon as somebody says, you don't know them, suddenly, it may even have been better for him to have said what is being done there than just to say, you don't know them. As soon as somebody says, you don't know them, 1,000 possibilities suddenly flood into your mind. And that's why that lady just said, there are too many questions. She didn't even say, I know a lot of bad things. She just said, there are too many questions. And we get the criticism by questions. <laughs> yes. Some, sometimes the questions we ask are even more terrible than the answers that are not given. Most of the time, how do relationships get destroyed? I'll tell you, two good friends. Then one person asks, like Satan asked God that Job serve you for nothing. That was the beginning of all Job's problems. The question that Job serve you for nothing. Now God has to prove that the, that, that question is wrong. So now Job, all Job's problems were from God trying to answer a question. You may you may have a friend. Maybe a childhood friend. You grew up together. You are family friend. It's a platonic, pure relationship. One of your friends asks you a question. Hey, brothers, be careful before.
before you sleep with him, oh, I tell you by this question, are you sure that he wants to sleep with you? Suddenly, something that you've never thought about, never, it has never crossed your mind. You see that suddenly you become self-conscious. Suddenly you begin, you, you begin to misinterpret the person's actions. Suddenly you find yourself not calling as much. Maybe you used to send a person and say, Hey, I've really missed this been a long time. Suddenly you cannot send those texts again from just a question that was asked. Satan asked, uh, told Adam and Eve, that God is thinking that when you eat of this fruit, you will become as wise as him, and he doesn't want you to become wise. Suddenly, something that was never in Adam's mind has now entered his mind by an by a suggestion. That's also another one. Mm -hmm. A suggestion that God doesn't want you to be as wise as him. He said, Oh, really? Can't you see that God is enjoying in heaven? Look at how they are struggling on it. The question is just answered. Look. This guy that you are always going out with, do you think your husband is happy with it? Meanwhile, in the past, your husband is okay with it. But as soon as the question is that, do you think your husband is happy with it? Suddenly, something that has always been nothing, that seed has now been planted in you. And a pure relationship has been corrupted. For example, if there's a huge barrel of water, pure, and then one drop of a contaminant is put in, it will, even scientifically, it may have a negligible effect. But just the fact that you know that one drop of a contaminant is in it, you will reject the whole barrel. That's why we should be careful about the things we see, even the jokes we crack. Also, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning that even questions can be accusations. Because I was always thinking there had to be direct accusations. But all these sarcastic questions yes. are a form of accusation. And suggestions. It can change yes. your relationship with others. They will. All that. They will. Very That's why you should be careful. Even about jokes. You may just go out. And as you look in the mirror, you're looking nice for yourself. Yes. And somebody just asks you, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the A is enough for you to start wondering what is wrong with you. <laughs> and then to change everything you want. <laughs> the A, A. What is wrong? <laughs> or the first one say, hey. Have, have you forgotten you are, you are a married woman? That's all. Yeah. You change everything you are wearing. Hey, you forgot you are a married woman. Mm -hmm. Or oh, hey, are you not happy you are married? <laughs> <laughs> yes! The person has not said you are unhappy. Yes. The, person has, the person is just asking you. Like, based on what you are hey, you want, <laughs> you want men to notice you when but you go out? I think the people that ask the question, they want to tell you, but they yes. want to use the question to make That's why it's accusations by sarcasm. Yes. Accusations by insinuations. Yes. yes. Questions? I said, God, <laughs> God was asked by the devil that Job served you for nothing. Meanwhile, Job was making sacrifices, efforts, pure servant to God. One question. So the devil wanted to tell God directly that he's serving you because of this and that. So he just asked the question. He was just being smart. <laughs> no, he was not being smart. Satan knows the effect of accusations. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to get us. You see, sometimes he may know that you you are very good at rejecting direct accusations. Mm -hmm. So you ask me a question. <laughs> One of the common ones. Hey, are you sure you are not in love with your pastor? <laughs> it's a common one. Yeah. Suddenly, you will find yourself not going to church so enthusiastically because, you see, we, none of us wants to be bad. Yeah. None of us wants the feeling of being bad. None of us wants the possibility of being bad. I'm using all these words because it is possible that you are in love with your pastor. So when the option of being in love with your pastor comes, 
Now your duty as a good person is to prove it wrong by counter actions against love. So you may have been going to check enthusiasm without even the thoughts that you love your pastor in a bad way. It didn't look at you. But as soon as that question is asked, you now have to prove that question wrong. <laughs> you may even think a lot of other people are thinking the way the person is thinking. So let me let everybody know that. So it's let me not slow like that. down. Yes, so let me guess. <laughs> it's not like that. So now you, you may even have wanted to do that. Oh, I won't do that. If I, you see, now, even at the point, it is not even to prove people wrong, it is to prove yourself. <laughs> yeah, it is to prove to, like, you try to convince yourself that that is not the case. And that is where now you see that your actions have now been changed. Maybe think, I mean, you read the Bible. The Bible says that, and there was Joanna the, uh, and Susanna, uh, wife of Herod, they, that who followed Jesus and put it out of their substance. Yeah. You see that God raised women to provide for the material needs of Jesus. Maybe God had raised you to be like that. But you see, for God so loved the world that He gave. So as you give, then you hear a question, and sometimes nobody but the devil himself plants a thought in your mind. You really love your person with the effort you went to. Hey, really? Suddenly, you want to prove to yourself that, or you want to prove to that thought. You want to convince yourself that that is not the case. So now you have a feeling that, oh, let me bless my person. You need a blessing to me. You say, oh, no, 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 no. It is this thing again. Let me not do it because, look, maybe I'm developing something that is not good. Acquisitions are evil. So if you don't understand accusations, uh, you will keep being redirected, redirected, redirected until you end up being in the place totally opposite to where you intended to go to. <laughs> Number four, accusations by being present. There are some people, when you see them, your behavior changes. Because you remember things they said. You remember even things they said about other people. And you don't want them to think that same way about you. So then you alter your actions in order to suit them. Even if it is completely opposite to how you are, you change your actions because they are present. So gradually, you become a hypocrite in the presence of your accuser. That's why it's accusations by being present. Then the next one also is the opposite accusation by being absent. Because when everybody is supposed to be there, the absence of somebody is a message that says, I'm not as impressed as the other people. So you so you feel belittled. That's why in parliament and in politics, there's something called a boycott. You boycott the meeting. Because your, your absence from the meeting is meant to send a loud, strong, clear message that you are against what is being done. The opposite is a public demonstration where your presence on the street is meant to communicate loudly and clearly also what you are against. You see, but in both cases, the aim is the same to communicate your disagreement. You see, so that's why it is important for us. No matter what it is that you should never be an accuser to someone because once you are, when you are present, it's a bad thing. When you are absent, it's also a bad thing. Number the next one, we've done a lot. Now, this is a very famous current one, number six in your book. Accusations by writing. This is where social media <laughs> accusations by writing. Journalists, you see what the Bible says about Daniel that when the writing had been done, Daniel was being accused of um, not obeying the king. But Daniel was not disobeying the king, he was just praying. But they wrote an accusation against that he doesn't obey you. He and his people they wrote it on Facebook, they wrote it on Twitter, they wrote it on uh, where Instagram, on Snapchat. <laughs> They wrote, they wrote on WhatsApp, Twitter. Twitter. They wrote to the journalists. They wrote in ah, BBC and the Daily News newspapers on Telegram as well. 
Ezra chapter 6. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation. Nehemiah as well. They wrote an accusation to the king against him. You see, once again, experienced people learn not to expose themselves to accusations. Because I tell you, Benis, you can read something about yourself, you won't like yourself. So you lose all confidence in yourself. You will realize you will feel hated, you will feel belittled, you will be he, what Satan does with accusations by writing, he convinces you, or he has a way of convincing you that what has been written is true. So that's why it is important not to expose yourself to accusations. And you know, and if you're a health minister, it is good to shield your head faster from being exposed to an accuser because your head person is flesh and blood it will affect him next ah uh, we've done that accusation by insinuations like i was saying about the suggestions matthew 26 6 to 8 uh, 8 to 9 matthew 26 8 to 9 alabaster box mary had done a beautiful thing even jesus See, they, look, this is beautiful. She has come to anoint me. A human being anointed God. They has come to anoint you. Beautiful. Then Judas counted and asked the question. <laughs> to what purpose is this reason? Why has she done this? That question alone was meant to see that Mary is a... I mean, every bad thing was said in that question. To what purpose is this reason? Then the Bible says, it could have been sold for. So, so, and so, which, uh, uh, if you study the Bible a bit, it will so a year's wages, a year's salary, and give it to the poor. Then the next verse says, They did him, they said he, not because he loved Jesus, but because he stole from their back. You see, Venice, you will understand with experience that every accuser is an evil person. People usually accuse to hide their own evils because it is like if I'm so if I'm able to see evil so clearly and I'm speaking up against evil so strongly, it cannot be that I am bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is, is the trick. Yes. It is called the best form of defense is attack. Yes. That is the trick. It is like I speak against fornication, all fornicators who go to hell, you, you fornicated, you are dying, you, you fornicated, mystery Babylon, you, you, I mean that if I know all these strong verses and I'm condemned, I uh, fornicated so much, oh, I mean, it's not likely that I'm a fornicator, you see, but Jesus Christ said, you who is removing the speck from your brother's eye, there's a moot in your own yeah. because there's a pin in your own life. It's that you are trying to hide your skeletons by picking at somebody's little tooth. This is what Jesus Christ said. You strain at the gnat like there's a fly, then you swallow a camel. Yeah. Usually, I promise you, Venice, you will learn by experience that the louder the accusation, the bigger the accuser. The more powerful the accusations, the more evil the accuser is. Also, I think some some of the accused, the people that accuse, some of them they do it also when they see that somebody is doing well, or that someone is getting a lot of praises. Then they want everybody to know that this person is not as good as she thinks. Yes. So then they want to say something to just bring the person down, so that they don't look so low. Yes. Yeah, so that they don't look so low. Yeah. Exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> to cut you down to their yes. level, so that you don't shine so bright. Yeah. Because see, be like, nothing to do with you, but just so that your shine doesn't make them look dark. Yes. yes. And it's quite a common thing. It's quite a, that's the number one reason for is that you want somebody to look evil. Yes. But usually, you see, Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him. He never said it. Peter would have killed Judas. Jesus, the, the more holy a person is, the less he accuses. Because it is not in the nature of God to accuse. Jesus said, have I not chosen you twelve? 
Yet one of the things they The Bible says that for Jesus knew from the beginning who it was who would betray him. It is not in the nature of God to accuse and to be. You'll be surprised when you see a man of God being incessantly accused. He doesn't say anything. You will be shocked at the depth of evil that he knows about those accusing him. Yet he says not a word. You see, the more righteous you are, the more holy you are, the more pure you are, the less you will be afraid of accusing people. Because you will even be afraid of God's judgment on the accuser. Because I promise you at the end, if you see the judgment for accusers, I hope you will be able to get there today, but the judgment for accusers, you will fear it. You will fear what God does for accusers. You will do, so the, the more you know God, and, and see, and like I was saying, you, you know you'll be judged for every idol where you are Like the Bible says, you will be slow to speak. But you see that accusers are not slow to speak. They are strong to speak. Recently, I was, we, we uh, got in one of the earlier chapters that you even be accused of the opposite of what you are saying. That's why you should understand accusations. Dear Pastor, you cannot be a child. You cannot be a child. You have to understand what accusations are and man up and take it on your chest and survive. You will be accused of the opposite of what you are. Recently, I preached somewhere and to my shock, what I said on video with my voice, it was reported that I said the opposite. In fact, when I heard I said the opposite, I was shocked. I said, I was so shocked that I went to take my own video. <laughs> I'm serious. I went to watch my own video three times again because there are times when you may be preaching and you say something you don't intend to But I was shocked. Not that I did not say what was said. I could not have said what was said. But I was, I was told I said the opposite. I went to listen to my own preaching three times. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well. And then I said, of course, I couldn't have said this. But you know, one thing, I said nothing. Because you see, there's also something the Bible even calls the importance of enduring the contradiction of sins. You see, part of being a Christian is not to defend yourself. Jesus was accused. The Bible says he answered not a word. See, the more godly you are, the more you will not find a need to respond to your accusers. So when I even saw they were wrong, I didn't say that I just said, look, I have more important things to do. Yes. You see, because one of the aims of the accuser is to distract you. Now you get into a social media war. No, <laughs> no one wins. No, no one wins. So you see that the person on social media insulted shouting, maligning, accusing, is the evil one. And do it. the Bible says the flesh, remember, first of all, in the flesh that was against the spirit. Spirit doesn't start the war. It's the, it's the flesh. It is carnality yes. that starts wars. So it's necessary not to follow your accuser. And no one wins a war. <laughs> Next, Accusations by sarcasm. We dealt with that earlier on. He said that, hey, really? <laughs> that, hey, really? The person said, really? That alone. <laughs> that alone is alone. That alone is enough to go and change your wardrobe <laughs> and even stay at home. Yeah. Or the person looks at the time and says, really? <laughs> that is it. Next, accusation by silence. This is a powerful one. You see, when somebody is quiet, you will learn with the experience that silence has a loud voice. You see, 2 Samuel 13, 22, And Absalom speak unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. Why? Why was Absalom silent? For Absalom hated Tamar. When you love someone, the first thing that happens is you speak to the person. Yes. Think about it. 
a man sees a woman in town, he's struck by a lust. It is usually not love. He's struck by a lust. He tells his friends, Charlie, the girl is nice. What happens next? His friends are like, go and speak to her. Is it true or not true? You see, once you are in love, let's now let's switch to love. Once you are in love with somebody, the first thing that happens is communication. Silence is a sign of hatred. Silence is a sign of dislike. Silence is a sign of disharmony. Silence is not neutral. Between the Old and the New Testament, there's what is called the intertestamental period, where God never speaks to Israel. He was angry with them. They were into idolatry. And that's why the Bible says that and in the year when Kiafas was high, the word of God was scarce in the land. God was not speaking. God was angry with them. How long have you been married, married for? Four years. Four years. That's not long enough, but I'm <laughs> sure you have had that experience. Is it not the case that anytime your husband is quiet, you say, what's wrong? Why don't you say, oh, wow, I'm so happy you are quiet. <laughs> You start to think of what you might have done wrong. Silence is always a sign of discord. Silence is always a manifestation of a problem, yeah. of dislike. So anybody who is silent to you, be it known unto you that the person has something against you. Anybody who doesn't talk to you, make sure you understand that the person doesn't like you. That's why he's not talking to you. Like I said, you didn't see a girl you don't know in town. The first thing that happens is go and talk to her. As in, break the silence. As in, if you love her, you, you cannot be silent. Silence is not neutral. And that's why when two people are in love, they are caught up. And they're silent for a few days. They like, ah, maybe he doesn't like me anymore. But he has not said he doesn't like you anymore. But we all interpret silence as a negative thing and you are right you are right in um, judging that silence is a sign of it anybody who used to text you and doesn't text you again is not neutral the person has something against you Absalom was silent towards his brother Tamar because he hated him his servants were on his side. He was talking to them about how to kill the person who he hated, who he was siding with. The person with whom they were on the same side was communication. The one he was opposing, there was silence. Silence is not neutral. In the whole world, the most quiet animal is the most dangerous animal, a serpent. Every animal has a sound. Even whales in the seas whistle. But a serpent, not a sound. <laughs> 10. Accusations by a continual dropping. Proverbs 27, 15. A continual dropping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. People who just keep repeating the same thing. It is, once again, it is meant to direct you to a particular cause. 11. Accusations by a contentious woman. That's what we have. Um, discussed earlier and finally and this is a very 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 important one accusations by redescribing events you may be out with friends you see and that's why you be careful when you are a gossip the bible says that a gossip dwells in the land of the dead because you see Every time a gossip is in the environment, something will die. A relationship will die. That's why you see that even people who are your friends, they'll say that if I go and say this, it will lead to the distraction of this, so I won't say it. You may see a friend that you've been, you've not seen in the long, maybe 20 years. You're so happy. Somebody will go and tell your husband, I saw your wife shot all over this guy. <laughs> I mean, and all over, what was all over? Even the long time we saw. But you see, the real describing of the event. Oh, you saw what you saw was. Look, you see, you should be careful about 
about being a gossip. I heard a story about a country and one of our pastors went to a hotel to meet someone and another politician who came to the hotel, elderly politician, very private man. And this pastor friend of mine said when he went to the hotel, he saw this elderly man coming out of one of the hotel rooms and as he came out, he was adjusting his, not like trying to so adjust his belt, he was trying to, uh -huh. Then a young woman came out of the hotel room after him. This other friend of mine knew the elderly man and knew the young girl. The young girl was a stepdaughter of his who doesn't live in that country. And she had come from abroad to visit. My pastor was telling me that when he saw the scene, it occurred to him that anyone who doesn't know the man and who doesn't know the girl will correctly assume that they had something to do with each other. But you will know that this girl is actually his daughter mm -hmm. that he's come to face it. Yeah. You see, you read described events usually to achieve a certain thing. But like this person, my who the man is his friend, they didn't have to do it. He was even defending the man. But another person would have taken a picture, put it in the newspapers. I remember the story of a great man of God who went to do a crusade in um, Spain. Benihim. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm mentioning his name because he addressed it publicly. After he divorced, he went to have a crusade in Spain, Madrid. And Paula White, who is a spiritual daughter to him, coincidentally was also having a program there at the same time. So they happened to stay in the same hotel. So he went and at the point he held her hand and were and, 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 and was working with her. Hey! The internet said for the wife is the reason why he had divorced. For the wife is his daughter. They are not meeting yet and they happen to stay in the same hotel. They were having them. Um, different programs you see but people will read this guy they were working hand in hand in their hotel in their courtyard but don't say in your courtyard the re-describing of events becomes powerful because listen the re-describing of events becomes powerful because some things are left out in the description they only say they were seen working hand in hand in a hotel they won't say they were working hand in hand in the courtyard of the hotel. You see, and the, and the reason is because the person who is accusing wants to achieve a certain negative evil aim in the retelling of the story. Like a gentleman who was, let me not give this example. You see, the more you mature, the more you will learn to take stories, accusatory stories, with a pinch of salt, knowing that there is an aspect of the truth that you don't know about. The Bible says, for we see through a glass darkly. You see, the Bible says that judge not before the time to the righteous that they will make you know the hidden things of let me tell you a story. When I was in secondary school, I was in form four. One night I couldn't sleep. I don't know what kind of evil thought came into my mind. I couldn't sleep. So I woke up and said, oh, let me pretend I'm James Bond. <laughs> so what did I do? I couldn't sleep. I was very restless. So I said, okay, the whole place was dark. Let me pretend I'm James Bond. So I went to take a torchlight going around. Somebody stood at his window, saw me with the torchlight going around and said, I am a thief. You see, but looking back, looking back, what else could he have assumed? For, yeah, why are you holding a touch line going around? See, that day, I think I learned a lesson for all time that everything we are seeing can be true. Or everything we are seeing is the fact. But your conclusion may not be the truth. So it has guided me in my life that whatever story it is you have heard, I always ask myself, what aspect is what aspect of the story is there that I don't know about? That if I knew, 
But maybe it's the, it's the completely opposite will lead me to that to an absolutely different conclusion because there's always an aspect you don't know. And that's why in the court of law, when they even see you with a gun and you shoot somebody, it's even recorded, you are not sentenced immediately. But you are taken to court because ju judgment and justice is aware that there may be some information that if added to the fact of what we saw may change our minds and our impressions about what it is that we actually and truly saw. So we should be careful because there are different types of yes. accusations. Thank you so much, Apostle. It's been an amazing, interesting time in the studios. And I'm very glad that I have this book. I'm going to read it <laughs> over and over and over and over again because I might be doing some things that are wrong. Because I didn't even know that you can be accusing people by not di accusing them directly. Yes. There are so many things that we do that we do not know. So this book is not for other people, it's for us. Yes. Let's work on ourselves. And by God's grace, we'll do better. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye-bye.